hey, Jacob might be starting a band with music that sounds like this. Yep. Cool. You know what this song kind of sounds like? Uh, MX versus ATV on Tank on the Wii. Um, uh, this is what I was going to say. Yes. This is what I was going to say. The linebacker at University of Kentucky is going to be really great today on today's matchup. Look at these highlights of him. He has great tackle form, and he has 15 uh, head-on face tackles this year, leading the country in 14 blah, blah, blah. Oh, that was still playing. It. Yeah. yeah, it does kind of sound like the NFL, like some some sort of highlight reel. But, yeah, that's that's a band called Turnstile, if you haven't heard of them. They're, my top, they're a top three favorite band of all time for me, I think. I don't know which place, one, two, or three, but... We're having them on the podcast next week. If you, <laughs> that would be insane. If you know John McClendon, shout out. That's my brother. He's getting right married in three months. Marriage song? I can't ever remember which one. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, dude, John's Marriage gonna, song? <laughs> John is going to love. Marriage check. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah. Hey, also, just want to jump on here and say that <laughs> we may or may not have recorded 20 minutes before this, and then uh, Stephen's foot slipped over the little power cord. Stephen f- had a little fart come out and ruined the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it, so this is the beginning of the podcast. I deeply apologize for how terrible the beginning yeah, of this I podcast is. We don't know if we're going to be able Today to Today we're recording with Jacob yet. McClendon. Uh, we're, if, oh, if you're a viewer, we're actually on the back porch. Yeah, so now that all of that's out of the way. Anyways, you're starting a new band. That's yeah. super fun. Me and cool. yeah, so John. <laughs> me, Sorry, I'm terrified me, now. Me and John uh, have uh, have always kind of John's <laughs> favorite genre of music is is heavy music. So we've we've always kind of bonded on that. And me and John had a thing a while back. It was a duo called Past Due Books. We played like two shows. Uh, one of them was at Waterstone Church in Warrior, Alabama. Amen. Uh, Amen. And we covered Jumpsuit by 21 Pilots. Come on. And a few others. And it, it was fun. I was really bad at drums at the time. But Is that it, the one that's like, somebody stole my car radio and now I just <laughs> sit in silence? <laughs> Is it that one? That, what you just sang it was dangerously close to the circus song <laughs> and 21 pilot song the one car radio like, uh, is dangerously close to that I think song. it's like the one that's just half of it is a drum solo it's yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> somebody told my car radio <laughs> that's a good song <laughs> if somebody you, told my car radio and now I sit in a quiet time if you <laughs> if you go to the depths of my YouTube channel, there's for sure a drum cover of Car Radio by 21 Pilots. I'm going to try and, and find audio it. And the audio is this video. the audio is from my phone. So the drums are like Yeah, you just can't hear them. Um, but yeah, me, you me should and John, listen to them on full blast with your headphones on. Headphones on also. Yeah. Me and so me and John have always been like heavy music is sick. We love playing it together and listening to it and all the things. So the other the other day, I guess, like a couple of weeks ago, I was just like, why have we never committed to just like doing a project with this stuff? And like, I, I play with Zion, I play with some other stuff and it's like folky and rocky and fun. I don't know. I, I like, I want to do different outlets of music and I have like a jazz gig and that, that's really fun, but I want to make like men I trust type stuff with people one day. So if you're sick, if you're wanting that, you have someone who wants to play drums or bass. Claro, if you're listening, uh, Claro, if you're listening. Claro, if you're listening, how what who how is your how dad? Did you get here? First off, who is your dad? Because I know <laughs> who is your dad. Because Jacob wants him to be his father-in-law. One I day. know that's not what I meant. I know that he's paying for all your crap. Is hey, what I Claro, was who's gonna be the father of your children? Because Jacob wants to be. <laughs> that's not what I said. Hey, Claro, how did you end up listening to this? What the heck? My letter to Claro. <laughs> and from Myers, how are you listening to this? <laughs> And Jacob, how, I want going? to father your children. <laughs> <laughs> Claro, you're a real person, and if you heard this, that would be so weird. Okay? <laughs> Anyways, the band we want to start is called Pookie, and so if you want to steal that name, Why are you changing the you. name if it's the same vibe as past due books? Uh, I guess Pookie's a way better name. Pookie's hilarious. But the thing is, there's always going to be a better name in two years. That's true, but past due books was... From now to past two books time was the most I'll ever change in my life. Mm, I don't know, man. 13 to 20? In a compressed time span, probably. Do you think you changed more from 13 to 20 or 20 to 25, Myers? 
God, it'd be 13 to 20. When you were 13, you were like Power Rangers and Play-Doh and bull crap. Yeah, now we like pay mortgages. <laughs> it's yeah, very we, different than 20. Yeah, like. I don't know. I mean, the last like two years have definitely been a very, very uh, growth and change intensive time. Yeah. But from, I think. I mean, I am surprised by how much I look back at college, Stephen, and I'm like, what the heck was I doing? It feels like a lot more growth has happened in a much shorter period of time versus 13 to 20 feels like it's a lot of change, but um, to me, when I look back on that, it seems like it took a lot longer. Yeah, because like, pretty much 13, I didn't really exist. You know, like 22 I was just like kind of like to 24 has space been filler. Like a lot of change for yeah, me. But, so, so I would really say 13 to 16 is pretty much no change at all. I or Sorry, 13 to 16 was a big change. And then 16 to 20 like probably wasn't as much change as, as I thought I had. Yeah. And then 20 to now I'm 26. That's a I mean that's a ton. Like is it I feel like it's a ton different now. What do you think was your biggest concern as a 13-year-old as a and a 23-year-old. What do you think those two were? 23? Yeah. Okay. I was second year post grad. Biggest concern. So, like if you were 13 and they were like what is you, what are you most like worried about at this point? How old are you in your thir- or what grade are you in? 13's you're like seven. How old are you in your thir- <laughs> <laughs> Uh in weeks mm, when you're 13 you're you're like seven you're a seventh grader I, th- I think. 15 Sounds is right. 15 is freshman year. So yeah, you're yeah. like in seventh grade. I definitely think I I remember walking in in my Parents were essentially like, you get, I, I really liked basketball, and I had a choice between getting basketball shoes or, like, tennis shoes for school, <laughs> and I got basketball shoes, Idiot. and I had to wear the basketball shoes as tennis shoes to school, and I was so mad. I wore, they were Nike Shocks basketball shoes, and I thought you they were sick shocks. when you played basketball, but whenever I was, like, at school, they looked stupid with my, like, Alabama gear, you know? <laughs> So I was like, I think that was probably my biggest concern was how I was perceived by others. Yeah, I would probably, probably agree with that. And when I was 20, my greatest concern was how I was perceived by others. <laughs> yeah, my greatest concern when I was 13 I mean. was like um, my parents not letting me play Need for Speed enough <laughs> and whether or not my purple Converse had a scuff on them. <laughs> purple Converse, let's get it. My th- biggest concern now is whether or not uh, I can provide for my family. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> like I think when I was 23, I was like, uh, like, so how you're how perceived heck, by your wife. How the heck am I going to pay for uh, two people to live while one of them is not working or making <laughs> any money and spending tens of thousands of dollars on school? Yeah. That was kind of my concern at 23. Yeah. And still is my concern. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think 23 though I don't really remember what 23 I was living in North Carolina when I was 23 I believe so my concern was probably the Bruins probably the or that's not the, the, the Bruins the so the uh, yeah, I was concerned the, about the freaking Canes yeah. NHL champs when I lived in Raleigh I'm, I'm their good <laughs> that's luck actually charm sick. I bet mean, that was fun did you go to games never went I honestly thought it was funny it was the first time I ever lived in a city with a professional sports team and I was like guys we gotta go to Canes game and everybody was like heck no nobody goes to Canes games and I was like what the heck is y'all's problem like I, I never got it why people they were like heck no wait, we're not going to a freaking sports game that's dumb I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Like, we just freaking go to another coffee shop or <laughs> restaurant or some stupid park. Stupid, <laughs> stupid. park. <laughs> I'm stupid. Oh, man. That's funny. Uh, what about you, Jacob? I know you're not 23 yet, but. uh, Yeah, three years on that one. But I think my biggest concern when I was 13, I'm trying to think back. I'm thinking back to a really specific outfit that I, I wore mm-hmm. a lot. Very gelled, short side part. I had this shirt that was blue that had a, a bear. Like it was like a print, like a rectangle print um, that had a bear taking like a selfie on it. <laughs> and I was like, this shirt is... Surely cool. not everybody was kind of good writing. <laughs> hey, will you actually tell that story? Yeah, I will. This will be a great clip. Let me finish my, my fit. Because I, was, I think it was appearance as well. I was just con- concerned with what yeah. people thought of me. And also the alt-right pipeline was a big concern of mine. As in, I was part, I became a proprietor of the all right pipeline <laughs> and what is all right pipeline all right pipeline is like ben shapiro absolutely destroying feminist <laughs> part 63 
and I would just watch those and be like, God, women are so stupid. And then <laughs> that's so terrifying that like I was a thirteen year I was a thirteen year old. I was like, mm, this is good. And then <laughs> your dad's like, like, I'm proud of you. <laughs> My I approve of you now. Yeah, son. It's funny because I yeah I, that's I just was like. I cared so much about politics when I couldn't vote for another five years. And then I, that's funny. I didn't know that about you. And then now I don't at all. And I don't know. I just like, I remember writing papers on like why Trump was a good president and stuff. And I was just like, you don't know a single thing about anything. You're wearing a bear taking a (laughs) selfie on your t-shirt right now. (laughs) And I, and I wore cargo shorts, some super colorful sock. And then like those Reeboks that are like, Squiggly yep. on the on the foxing. The zigger zaggers. <laughs> <laughs> the zigger zaggers. <laughs> I love the Reebok zigger zaggers. <laughs> um. Yeah. And then I and then I also wore. You remember those baseball necklaces? The like woven. Yeah. Oh yeah. The yeah. fighting. I didn't play baseball at all. <laughs> That's but okay. I thought, you I thought wear that <laughs> still. <laughs> I thought I thought they were so cool, and mine was broken. So it was oh, you know what I did? This might have been when I was fourteen, <laughs> but I carried around like a lanyard hanging out of my <laughs> yes, pocket with nothing. When I didn't have any keys, yeah, for would, like three years. I put a keychain on it so it had some weight to it. Yeah, I, I straight up, I around. carried a vineyard vines lanyard on until like <laughs> I, almost until I got to college. Like that is so. That is one of my mine was a Samford <laughs> one. Mine was like a one of the two inch Sam Samford ones. Now so I, I, this is actually a theorem I'm working on. If you see someone with a, a lanyard, there is a 100% chance they also are going to vape within the next 15 <laughs> seconds. Where's my, yeah. Where's my yeah. vape? Put it on your lanyard, idiot. What was the story my you favorite. wanted to tell? Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. While I, You saying your fit of seventh grade made me remember my favorite fit in, se- in seventh grade was um, flip-flops. And uh, I, I don't change, yeah. <laughs> Flip flops, and then I had a pair of like, like what are those, those like rubber mesh ones that were like ninety nine cents? At yeah, Walmart they were definitely now. like rip curl or something. <laughs> but uh, do you know, the, like, what are those like mesh gym shorts called? Or the, is that just what they're called? Those are like basketball. Uh, yeah, those are were like yeah, I just like called them the, basketball shorts. Yeah, like the mesh gym, like yeah. you give them for like your PE uniform. Super long. I had a red, r- bright red <laughs> pair, Alabama Crimson Tide on like the bottom left of them. How? And uh, then I went how, to where did they hit your knee? Oh, below for sure. <laughs> like they were long, and then I went to um, my parents took me to Winter Jam because freaking they, Winter Jam was dope as frick. God. <laughs> I would still go to that. I would go I if would Winter go. Jam came back to Birmingham. I would seriously go. They come not, every go. year. Just to, wait, actually, that would be Birmingham? so John, funny. John took when he worked at that church in in coming. He took they took their youth group to Winter Jam. Wow, and he said. That Cutlass was sick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I've wow. loved Cutlass, dude. Strong tower. Did, did they like... Honestly, <laughs> you were my strong tower! <laughs> TFK? Dude, yes. Don't even get me started. Wait, so when... How many songs... Because like, in retrospect, I was like, every single set lasted... Like, if they played a million songs, it was all sick. But like <laughs> now, like, they have to play like three songs so, each. Yeah, there's the pre-jam, which is... I hate that I know this, but there's the pre-jam, which is... Most of the time, every city, they'll get like local, like okay. whoever's popping okay. Christian local. Will, will Carlisle play the Will Carlisle in Atlanta? God, that would be so. <laughs> I would, funny. Be, I would try to go to State so Farm Arena. Will Carlisle? Wow. Um, Thousand yeah. Foot Crutch comes out and plays some fifteen-year-old <laughs> <Because> song. I <laughs> was born this way. Um, <laughs> and then Will Carlisle comes out, <laughs> and yeah. So the pre-jam comes on. They each do literally like a twenty or twenty-five minute set, um, and then each band. Because like Crowder plays every year, and his set is actually like so cool. Like I'm, I'm mm-hmm. not even gonna lie that he's like s- such a talented guy these yeah, days. Yeah, he's a killer. Um, but he'll play like 45, and then the he- whoever's like headlining, probably like Map City or something, will play like an hour. But yeah, the sets are like 20 or 30 minutes long. Like they are cooking yeah, they're, they're through getting sets. Through it. But the uh, and it, so I, I went to Winter Jam and Flops, I got red shorts and my and my parents let me get one merch piece <laughs> wow. at the merch booth. I got a Family Force Five yes. T shirt oh. with like little um Actually, animated like monsters all over it. That's incredible. <laughs> that, I wish you still had that. So and honestly it's probably in the depths of my somewhere at home. Dude, I really wish find I find it. But I That's like a baby tea. Like, every wear. chance that I could, I would wear that black Family Force Five T shirt with like 
animated monsters all over it. I was my red shorts and rip curl flip flops. And if it wasn't the family four five, it was my number seven Georgia football. <laughs> and then my favorite hat was a maroon Virginia Tech hat that I found at Ross. <laughs> no. Was it flat? No, oh, it's that's just good. a freaking. Da- it was a. It was like the. Uh, the one size fits all. It was like the stretchy yes, hat. Yes. <laughs> it was so I had ridiculous. a bunch of um, Sean White used to make clothes with Target. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, that I was had actually so good many stuff. cool Sean White shirts. Yeah, <laughs> and it'd be like the white T-shirt with like the gray sleeve, so it looks oh, like yeah. there's a shirt like the under a one? shirt. But there's not. There's just a different oh, yeah. sleeve mm-hmm. you ever sewn see into the, the short sleeve. The shirts at Target are, are more probably stuff like goodies. That had like headphones or something come with it, oh like my a gosh. toy. I, I was definitely like, had Mom, those. I'm not even kidding. I actually like the shirt. I don't care about the toy. I actually like the shirt. <laughs> she was like, "Here's the same shirt without the toy." She's like, "I'm like, that's just different." <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that goodie stuff. <laughs> that's so like the funny. Toy on like the on the yeah. Thing it's it. like I'm. I could get this shirt with a dinosaur on it, or I could get the same shirt with the dinosaur on it with a little dinosaur that comes with it. Yes. And that is what I want. Yeah. What? Oh, so, we were talking about something Oh, uh, your dad. Oh, yes. Do you have something that uh, pertains to the little dinosaur? No. Okay. Um, when, so my all my roommates, um, I just moved into a house a couple weeks ago with four roommates, and um, all their parents happened to be in town. Two of us are from here, so it, it makes it easy, but all of our parents happened to be in town. We were like, let's get the roomies, let's get the parents, let's have a dinner. So we went to Back 40, which is like, the meeting spot of groups bigger than 15 in yeah. the city. And everyone shows up and uh, Sam's dad is wearing a blue dry fit golf polo. Ethan's, or Jack's dad, blue dry fit golf polo. Uh, Wit's dad. Wit's dad, blue dry fit golf polo. Wow. All, all like varying, like super, if you know that scene in American Psycho where they are showing their business, they cards, the business cards and they're like, Look at that eggshell. Oh yep. my. It was like that, where it was like, oh, you got the blue with the, and I got the yep. blue with the, and my dad <laughs> shows up in a green t-shirt with white writing on it, graphic tee, that says, surely not everyone was kung fu fighting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Cargo shorts. Cargo shorts and uh, Keens, the sandal. <laughs> yep. And I I really, I've just never been, like, prouder <laughs> as a son, I think. Because mm. I, I was just like. He didn't conform. Also, He's a nonconformist. He has, a, he has a bl- that blue golf polo. Like, yeah. he has one of those. And he was, I was like, I told him about the, how funny I thought that was. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I, it's like dinner. I'm going to wear a t-shirt. I don't want to look nice. And I was right. like, right? Like, doesn't that Fair. make sense? And so then. And that shirt was a gift from John because John saw it on someone in an airport and was like immediately thought of my dad. <laughs> also, yep. who's wearing that one to the airport? <laughs> yep. um, but he saw it on someone in the airport and then immediately went on Amazon and bought it and gave it to him for Christmas. And my dad opened it on Christmas Day and, and like got a little emotional because he loved it wow. so much. Like it's That's just, incredible. It's the perfect shirt for him. Oh my gosh. I saw this shirt the other day. Let me show it to you. Oh, I don't have my phone. It was it was Lightning McQueen with a red dinosaur <laughs> behind Lightning McQueen. And then at the bottom it said Paramore. <laughs> no, it was Darth Maul. <laughs> yes. I saw yes. that. I think was, you might have sent that to me. It was Lightning McQueen, Darth Maul, and it said Paramore. Yeah. And I was like, gosh, I would That's wear perfect. that so much if I yeah. had What the heck? That it's is just, crazy. It's just like, I don't know. It's, just a, it's a dumb graphic, but I thought it was so funny. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, my and yeah, my dad's band. My dad plays drums as well, but he's in a band. And they had like a live session, like recording thing, where me and John like camera operated. Uh huh. And he was like, um, really like worried about what he was gonna wear because he wanted it to look good. And one of the sessions he wore Zion merch, which I was like, you dog. Like one of the songs he wore Zion merch, dastardly. Mm-hmm. And then dastardly dog. And then the other one he couldn't. One of the other ones he couldn't figure it out, and he wanted to wear the kung fu shirt. And John was like. Don't wear that. <laughs> he was like, that. And he's like, okay. So he, I can't remember what he wore, but yeah, he, he loves that shirt a lot. Um, do you have a, this is changing the subject again. I don't know if you had something else you want to say, Steven. No, I was just I was say, in his attempt to look cool for a band video, he's like, I'm wearing the Kung Fu Fighter shirt. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just so funny. To me. I mean, it would have been like, that's a fun, like, there's this shirt I've wanted for years that I'll, I'll never get because I just can't commit to it, but Remo Drive had a live session one time 
Um, and the lead singer was wearing a shirt that said sex, drugs, and Christian rock. And I thought that was the funniest shirt that was funny. ever, but I can't, I'm not going to wear a shirt that says sex on it. Yeah. Um, I remember going I'm not going to wear a, Judah a shirt that says and on it. <laughs> <laughs> Three times. I'm not, um, I, I, I like, I, I vividly remember Judah and Lion concert at Sloss whenever, which is a, like a old, like factory in Birmingham that's now like a venue. And uh, it was an unbelievably fun concert. I'm not a big fan of Judah and the Lion, but I am a big fan of Judah and the Lion concerts. They're yeah, always they're so, really so fun. fun. Yeah. And uh, so, anyways, we, me, and like all my homies went, and there was like a huge crew of us. This is when I was in college, so like a ton of people. We met up with a ton of people from the, my school there. Anyways, we're like he walks, he comes out, and uh, this is after Colony House opened up for them. Also, Tall Heights Insane. came That's open so up for sick. them, That's which so is just like it was a great. There was already like a lot of really good music, and then they he comes out and he's wearing a collared shirt with like a collared shirt button down, and on top of it, it over it, a t shirt that said Belmont Mom, <laughs> and wow. I thought it was the coolest yeah. t shirt ever because Belmont is like very similar to the school that I went to. So I literally went to the like store the next morning and got a Sanford grandpa shirt <laughs> and I wore it like all the time. I think Claire or no Sanford grandmother. And then, uh, I, I thought it was so funny. And then I wore it around my grandma and she got so offended that I didn't <laughs> buy her one. I got it for That's myself. Hilarious. Like That's she, I like wore it at her house at Christmas and she thought I was like, I was like, ha ha like i'm wearing what i got you for christmas but it was just because i like <laughs> you just had a shirt on <laughs> that's super, so kinda, funny that's so funny, funny honestly awesome. jacob do you have a timeline on when y'all are gonna put out music or what's the plan pookie um i think that have also, you written songs something i just thought about is that like a producer tag i think at the beginning of every song it'll say pookie Mm. That'd be funny. You should get the one like Pookie and Chet. You, you should get I should like get him Pookie saying. Looks, yeah, I actually should. Oh, that's a great idea, John. Write that down. Write that down. John, um, that no, down, we, me down. and John have like written things together, just like over the years being brothers. Just because like he plays guitar, I play drums. Sometimes it happens at the same time, I yep. guess. And mm-hmm. um, we have like a song he we wrote at his house in Irondale that I I really really like. Um, that I think that will probably make a, a Pookie song. And Let's go. Do one of y'all sing. John is pretty, actually, pretty good at screaming and also can sing pretty well. Um, so I can do a good punk rock tone, but I, I can't scream. Yeah, John so. John is, see, I can't scream either, and I genuinely wish that I could. I think it's the coolest thing, but John is, John is really good at it, and I think. Yeah, this is one of those like, conversations, guys. Like, I just want to say that if, if any of y'all are out there and y'all are hearing them, talk about screaming in this way and you're just like rolling your eyes i'm with you i don't really i don't really understand this this try it try it and you and you'll understand time you're (laughs) bad next time you hit it it. next time you hit a bad drive try it (laughs) (laughs) next time you hit a bad drive i used to try try it to scream like that when i was 13 so that's what i was thinking about when i was 13 i was listening to disciple and pillar I don't know who Pillar is, but and, I know who Disciple is. And Pillar's Disciple like one of those things so holds bad. up a roof. Good one. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Decipher Down. Yes. Three Days Grace. Three Days Grace, not a Christian band? Close enough. Mm. Uh, I can't remember any others. It's like LaCroix, not a Christian band, but Christian shout out. You Christian know? shout out to, hey, shout out to TFK God. was kind of like that. Thousand Foot Crutch. Yeah, that, they also were my, the fact that they were TFK's my guys. lead singer was the same as FM Static. That blew my mind. Yeah. Oh, I was I like, you can be in two bands. <laughs> what? <the laughs> what? Heck? what? Yeah. Oh, there's so much like old Christian rock. That Why do y'all think that y'all like originally heard someone scream into a microphone and you were like, I relate to that? John, I don't relate to it. John like put me on. I think he, he was big into like heavy stuff for it. And his progression was like Foo Fighters, then Nirvana, then something like Three Days Grace, something a little heavier. And then he was like Slipknot, and it was like this crazy, Whoa. heavy, like, oh my gosh thing. But then on the way to school, we're like listening to Slipknot, and I'm we're riding in his truck, and I'm just like, what is your problem? Like, you seem to be so angry all the time. And to some, to some extent, that was true. John was angry in high school. <laughs> but um, Psychosocial by Slipknot, if you ever listen to that song, that, that like... 7.35 a.m. on the way to Tabernacle Christian School. Like, 
I was a just, crazy that's genre of music to, to listen to at yeah. 35 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I can't get with the vocals. There was this Christian band called Relentless Flood that's like a ton, <laughs> like a tiny <laughs> like a tiny yep. like Christian rock band and they had very heavy instruments and very chill vocals and I was like, I can get with this. This is sick. Because uh-huh. I was the same way. I was like, I just don't, can't do the screaming. I can't do it. And I just listened to it more and more and then like Beartooth was my gateway band. Uh, into like heavy stuff because he he had some screaming, but also I just it's just super emotional, like very very raw emotion. I I think I like clinged onto that, and then I just like started listening to heavier and heavier stuff, and then it it changed from like what is this to like this is so sick, and it's I just yeah I don't know why I don't know why I just I really do enjoy it. So that's sick, it. Pookie. I think I could probably still sing. You know who I loved, Red. <sighs> Oh my! Dude, I you're could probably sing every Breathe into me, bro. Yes, you're speaking my language right the now. The Innocence and Instinct album. Red was so. That sick. was like one of my favorite albums. Not ever. the Taylor Swift album. Not the Taylor Swift album. No Taylor Swift talk on my WOM podcast. There's okay, too much. Of that. Just kidding. There's not too much, guys. I can't remember. I'm gonna listen to them on the way home. It's so. It's so good. Uh, to me, it was like. Uh, I liked Reliant K. That's good stuff. The Sahara by really Reliant good. K. Their heaviest song, I think, or ah, uh, maybe not. Es- Escape. Be My Escape, banger. Killer. They're still very good. The yeah. album he wrote about um, his like deal, his tr- troubles with his marriage, uh, it's got like a an old camper on the cover. I can't remember what it's called. I think it might be called Savannah. That record yeah. is so good. Do you ever listen to The Almost? Mm-mm. They're really good. Uh, what's his name? Aaron Gillespie is the lead oh, singer. Oh, okay. Yes. Big under yeah, oath guy. He, yeah, he had like a... Um, uh, he was the lead for the almost for like two albums, three albums. Okay, maybe. sick. And I they think they like did a reunion rocky. show the other day. They John, weren't like hardcore. John's but they a were fan. Rock. John's a fan of that. What song. do y'all think at the at the end of your life? Like you're like eighty years old. What do you think your favorite kind of music is going to be? Berlioz could definitely hit as an eighty year old. I think. I think that's a like band. A band that you've known for two months is I, what you're saying is going to be your favorite. Maybe music. six months. I think that could hit. As an oldie, that's crazy. It's right? like I, I've liked House for like two or two years now, ish. Yeah, and I think that that will carry through my life. But like that is the chillest, most most like relaxing house, most like relaxing house. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that can. And it's just it. like, they're like they kind of scratch that jazz itch. Yeah, for sure. I could see myself resolving on jazz. As I my last I, I feel like I I really do think that old people will never. Like be able to keep up with like a, like a fast BPM. Like mm-hmm. I don't think that old people now do. I think that old people always like tend to come around to so, whether it's more Americana, like like Ray Lamontagu or whatever his name is, or like Jason Isbell. Like even yeah, like yeah, yeah. more just more Americana. Like like older people tend to get into more like good rich music. Yeah. So I'm really curious if there will be like. As people our age who make like way too much music these days, like there's uh, so much music coming out, it's ridiculous. You like, think that's a, you think that's a net negative? I don't know. I'd actually love to hear your thoughts I don't know on that. Either I, I think I, I think that like the, do you think that overall the quality? Because I think that there's just like so much availability to it. Yeah, yeah. I so. think with the how popular hip hop is these days, you can make hip hop that sounds like the stuff that's like chart topping. Mm-hmm. With if you have three thousand dollars, yeah, that's SM, fair. SM7B, MacBook, two channel interface, done. Like that, yeah. that's all you need to make that music that good, and someone who's really good and creative. But um, yeah, I I think that a, for a long time, as in a long time, ages fifteen to seventeen or fifteen to eighteen, I uh, I I like worked from this like I can never freaking be successful in music. There's so many people. I just worked for my constant like fear of oversaturation mindset, mm-hmm. and I, I still I still do have fear of oversaturation. There's just so many bands. Someone shows me a new band, and I'm like, "Gosh, do they have a discography discography three albums deep, and have done a full US?" And it's like, "How is there so many people doing that?" Yeah, and it's it, it can be discouraging of like, why would a band that I'm ever in be able to do something like that? But then, kind of looking at it at a glass half full perspective, like, wow. All these people are making a living, and there's a f- so many touring bands, and they all have dedicated fans. Yeah. And in in my major, there's this 
like philosophy that you need a thousand dedicated fans to make a true like a, fans. a true living in, in music. And that feels not true at all. But a a dedicated true fan is someone who's like gonna intake and buy everything that you put out, any piece of merch, any piece of music, any show you have, if they're in your city, that's a true fan. And if you have a thousand of those, you can make a living. In that perspective, it's like, okay, well, this can I can make that happen for sure. Because like you think about Zion. Oops. Cool. You think I almost ab- got into a car accident by my house. You think about Zion. We probably have between 80 and 200 true dedicated fans. That right. that would be my probably, guess. Probably, yeah. Uh, a- anything over 200, I think, is, is probably not true. That's like wishful thinking. So like, like when you say make a living, that means Zion will make a living if with a thousand fans? Or we, all of we, y'all would? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's like very broad, like artist. So I guess it's getting specifics of like a band could be paid. I don't know. But probably, I, I would say, I would say yes, which is I mean, if, interesting. if your true fan spends a hundred dollars a year on you, yeah, that's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, tickets, merch, and whatever else. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's which it's is very not possible. really enough to have five four people, five yeah. people live on. But like, it's a it's a start, and yeah. it, odds are it might they might spend more than that. Yeah, it's it's an interesting like you can definitely be like frick, this will never happen, and be really negative about it. And you can be really positive about it and be like, I could do this because this, 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 this person is doing it. And I, I think I've worked from different mindsets, different days. Yeah. So I found in a lot of my studying of business, a similar thing. It's and and I'm developing a theory that a lot of our problems in culture right now are due to the significant increase in population over a short period of time. Mm. So part of part of what's been crazy is a the internet has come around in our generation which has made everyone have access to everything in each other yeah all over the world so now we can kind of see how gigantic the world is and also um how many it, it it's a good thing because it's given a lot of people access to be able to do things like make music and put it out um and make a living out off of it um so that's part of why you see so much of it and it feels like oversaturation, but also with comparison to how big the population is, it's not really oversaturated. Yeah. And like we all listen to so many different bands. So like adding one more to the queue doesn't feel like as a consumer doesn't feel like that much. You yeah. Know? It's like we just found Burlois, whatever, however you pronounce Berlioz. it. Berlioz. Berlioz. Yeah. And it's like, I really like him. So he's, when I'm in the mood for that, I listen to yeah. it on Wednesday. And like yeah. he gets the streams, and if he came through Birmingham, I'd probably go see him play. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Like, it, it, it is, like, very, very cool that any, any given night at Saturn, you could go through and see someone who's a expert at what they do. Like, that that's, like, incredible. And also that, like, it's not like you're driving, like, record radio station to radio station with your record being, like, could you play this? Yeah. I think a lot of people... Mm-hmm. Definitely like fantasize that era or uh, romanticize that era of music. That's sick that it was like all physical. And like, I definitely think that would have been a cool era of like the music industry to live in. But also, like, I can email a venue and be like, here's this and this, 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 and this about us. Who's who, here's who we know in your city who we want to open. Like, what do you have available? And like, then we, we go play music in front of people. Business people do the same thing where they romanticize that, like, there was so much more opportunity when the internet wasn't around and now everyone's oversaturated with ads and stuff. Yeah. Which ads. Yeah. Advertising is, real. is like I, the worst part I, about America. Yeah. I like, I don't ever actually want to have real ads on here if we can help it because dude, freaking, I get so tired of ads everywhere yeah. <laughs> all of the time. But, yeah. um, anyways, there's still so much opportunity and more opportunity now than there ever has been. Like the cost to, like you were saying, cost to make music is basically negligible now. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could go buy the gear yourself for $3,000, but also like you probably know someone who has the stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Also music. That's like, um, there's a lot of music that's really popular. Um, that is not that hard to, I mean, artistically, creatively, very, very like need someone who's good, but like, Gear wise, it's not, not that hard. Very yeah, difficult and, to and make. it's like there's just songs that get popular on on TikTok and stuff now that are are made by like a 13 year old. And like there's this trope or not trope. There's this meme that's like while you tweak that synth pad, 
like there's a kid that just made a beat that like Kendrick Lamar is using. Yeah. Like it's it's just no, nothing is that deep. I think when when it sometimes when it comes to music, but Stephen, this oversaturation, positive negative thing, how does this apply in your line of work? Uh, like in church, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. man. I mean, I think it's like super. It, it's like the counterculture, cultural like narrative of like don't develop a platform, don't develop a um. Or at least like the line of church that I work in. There's like a, there's a lot of people who really want like independence and they want their name out there and they want like a platform. And I don't really understand why, but they, they do. And they, I guess, cause they want financial like stability or whatever, but which I totally understand. But anyways, I feel like the only thing comparable would be like a, you opening up a jazz club or like a house music venue or just a, you opening up a venue but it's it, it's really interesting to me. My my cousins who were in town this weekend and uh, the their neighbor behind them uh, before, well now it's Kelsey Bellagrini, but the girl who lived in it before that house was who, uh, like probably one of the most famous female country artists Kelsey, in the world. Kelsey Battistelli, Bat- 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 um, Francesca Battistelli, Francesca. That was no, that's I'm, what I'm thinking of <laughs> Kelsey Bellagrini. Kelsey before Bellagrini. that, it was Casey Musgraves. Oh wow. Um, your cousins before not that, money like that, no, oh. they just live in a part of Nashville. They've been living there since like 1990 something. Oh, okay, and they've, sick. and uh, down the street, they Darius well. Rucker, the next door neighbor, Theo Vaughn. Like, I mean, they have they live in a crazy neighborhood. That's actually but, sick. But the person who lived there before Casey Musgraves was a guy whose brother was maybe like in Talking Heads or something. Like, he, but this guy. Uh, he made like one album and it was like an ambient album. But besides that, he just like helped write for a ton of people. He like, uh, he wrote for George Harrison, like one of the Beatles. Like he wrote for, um, uh, there was somebody else that was just like insane. Like he like helped write one of their albums. It was like Pink Floyd or something like that. But he helped write for one of this, these guys. I can't remember his name. But this guy loved music, but he wasn't a musician. And, right. and he had music blaring in the backyard all, all the, time. the time. He had like house shows left and right. He had people. And this was back in, like he was their original neighbor before Casey Musgraves. And if you know anything about Casey Musgraves, she's part of the architectural digest theory that people, whenever they do, hey, come look at my home at architectural digest videos, they immediately sell their house afterwards because it's just like a publicity thing of like to get people to buy their house. Yeah. Also, I learned this, I know that, that whenever you're a super rich person, the house comes with the furniture. So if you buy an AD house, the furniture comes with the house. Like yeah. they don't Weird. a lot of they just people buy all yeah, a lot furniture. of people sell it with all the furniture. Yeah, just and their interior the designer just like completely furnishes their next house for them because yeah. they're like it's too much whatever. It's wild. So anyways, uh, Casey Musgraves moved out of this house, but Casey Musgraves, if you've ever watched her videos, or if you've ever watched her video about her house on AD, you know that she lived there for like a long time. So anyways, the guy that lived there before her was like had tons of shows tons of music and even when nobody was there he would just blare music in his backyard and right. then these amazing musicians moved into the neighborhood that are currently famous no music ever in the neighborhood mm. Interesting. and that's, that's very yeah and i think that i don't really know exactly how this applies to this conversation but i do know that that original guy in a weird way he's probably more applicable to my line of work than like casey musgraves is because casey musgraves is a figure like a church, church is like a a person who's like a, a church is like. I feel like you're a fan of the movement or something. Like you're a fan of the of the object of the of the thing. You know, like I, I feel like people who are into music truly are just really into art. They just really love create creation and creativity. Yeah. How do you feel about this this conversation of oversaturation and stuff like that with regards to our podcast? You know, I think it's interesting because I, I think it's the same way that like. There's probably a million people that could get on our podcast and be like, this is super cringe. They're talking about everything that everybody else talks about. And it's like super fair. But also, if that's how you judge a podcast, then every single podcast will feel that way to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like. Uh, yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. So for me, it's like if, if we're making our thing, honestly, and we've talked about this before, but we're really passionate about like people breaking down. Like I think in that line of thought of like, oh, you shouldn't make it because it's already been made. 
well then I th- if that was what we were doing then we would never make anything ever in any way you Nothing know because it's new under the sun yeah so it's just kind of the it's kind of to do something you know we've talked about that before and then also like we're really passionate about our why simon sinek ted talk come on if you've ever watched it please do <laughs> Start with your why, and then Come kind on. of build build out of your why, and that's what's going to make you actually get things done. But our yeah. why is like we want people to to have opportunities to conversate with people and be a part of conversations that they can talk about with other people. And we're trying to like fight against the loneliness epidemic and in, in America and stuff, or just not America everywhere. But because a lot of people are like, if you're not American, just don't even listen. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, that's like kind of. I feel like that's that's what applies to a podcast. But in terms of oversaturation, podcasts are like insane. Like people are doing, like people are doing podcasts for a long time, and by a long time, I mean like twelve years. So in comparison to music, it's nothing. Yeah. yeah. But like podcasts are super interesting because you think that uh, it like literally we keep getting feedback that we are like a like if you're a Birmingham person, this is the podcast for you. And That's I think it's super sick. interesting because we've never made this like a Birmingham. Like we never intentionally We talk about been Birmingham like, just because that's where we are and that's where the people we and interview more are. So, yeah. I think more so than other people, we we can we as in just like our friends, I guess not WAM specifically, but we like care about spaces more than most, I think. Yeah, and places. And like we f- fawn over places in other cities too. Yeah. Like, dude, I actually, this is side tangent, but I was talking to one of our customers who's a pastor of a church mm-hmm. and he's in Cincinnati right now. And I told him about Elliot and he said, he's going to go there and like, no way. Hey. So I don't sick. know if that's actually going to happen, but I told him my wow. friend Elijah runs a cafe up that there. That is sick. Huh. Dude, so I hope that happens. Wow. Circling back to you real quick. Do we got to like, yeah. So yeah. Should circling back to uh, what you're saying about that guy that like not a musician but like loved music. Um, my freshman year of college, two years ago, I uh, the like welcome back concert for the for the school was the band Camino, and um, I the opening band was like a an on campus ensemble that I'm in, so I got to open for them and talk to them and stuff. It was cool, but cool. Um, there were some there were some chillers, but the drummer very very good. Um, Garrett, I think is his name. Sounds right. He, uh, basically he was like addressing the whole, like my whole major of like commercial music people. And, um, someone asked like, what do you, what do you bump in these days? What what do you listen to? He's like, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble. And we were like, what the heck is he supposed to say? He's like, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble. But like, I don't listen to a lot of music ex- unless it's like maybe inspiration for like the records. And that was just kind of like. I know that, like, people that do... I mean, I I definitely feel the same way of, like... I do music 75% of my week. That's over-exaggeration, but close. A lot of it. I... And when I'm in the car sometimes... Recently, I've been listening to a lot of music in the car. When I'm in the car, I'm like, this is my break. Mm -hmm. For for music is a lot... For a lot of people, it's like, I go to work, and then I get to listen to music after. For me, it's like, work is music. School is music. So I get to listen to a podcast and unwind. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when it's your job... Like you can only make it like arty farty so long, right. yeah. Like it, it it is a job, and like I mm-hmm. don't want to like do it all the time because I do need a break. That's why there's like fun like outdoor hobbies that I enjoy. Yeah. So it's like I t- honestly f- really fully understand why that guy that guy loved it, and writing was his job, but like music itself. Yeah. And like this guy, I was like, oh yeah, music's his job. He's he's touring half the year playing every night he probably yeah. is tired of he probably listening wants quiet when he's yeah. at home yeah, yeah. so it, it, it is super fascinating there's a there's a beautiful balance to like yeah making your job and making it your hobby and making your hobby your job yeah uh, yeah yeah well guys we gotta run because hunger we have our home games tonight and we're involved parts of our community but we love you so much we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thanks for listening. And I really hope that we can find the hopefully first. Hopefully the first part of this is on, but if not, 45 minutes is still a decent Warm. episode. Warm. This song right here is a lost track that somebody found. It's called Did Want Have to Do It by Cass Elliott. I came across it this week. Lost tracks are music that was recorded and then they never got a record label, so then they, they're, they're found in like discographies that like sick. old record labels so i have loved this song this week so i hope you do too but Jake, anyways coming on. yeah guys this was a blast thank you for listening to our talk goodbye
Welcome to the secret segment of the podcast where we're going to talk about secret things. You don't want to repeat one of the series that we get to hear about. All right, Jacob, I got one one question for you, man. End of, end of a long day. End of a long, hard day. What are you doing to treat yourself? I'm so happy you didn't make this a love life thing because like 79% of <laughs> secret segments are like, what's it like with the ladies today? <laughs> so hey, We all know how it is I, right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, when I get home from a long day, as I said, I just moved into... <laughs> no. <laughs> I just moved into a, uh, a new home. So I haven't had many long days because it's the summer and I'm doing a bunch of summer stuff, which is nothing. And so I'll get home from a long day of, of class. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll sit on my couch, snag a LaCroix Ooh. or a sparkling water or a glass of milk, honestly. I love milk. I love That's drinking milk. so weird. And Give me some milk. I'll get some milk. Um, I'm just going to get a big old fat <laughs> jug of milk. <laughs> I'm, dude, that is so what relaxing. Kind of milk? So what do you do whenever you drink the milk? I drink it, man. I'd sit on my couch. I'd drink it. And I'll throw on, recently it's been like Krungbin live sets, Parcels live sets on my TV. Oh, love. Because that has been so nice to just have on. Um, love. Wit, one of my roommates, his uh, his uncle was a super successful folk guitarist in Wales. Cool. And his parents sent him a record because um, Wit had never heard his music. He, they sent him a vinyl of his music. So we've been bumping that in the house recently. Sick. Is it good? So, awesome. Yeah, it's super sick. It says Chris Grooms on it. Gypsy Rose, or just Gypsy, I think, is the um, the name of it. It's him with a guitar. Dude looks like Wit, and it's wow, so That's cool. Awesome. That's um, sick. So yeah, just been listening to music and and having beverages. Yeah. Music and beverages is so relaxing. That's, that's on. one of my favorite things. I honestly think like vinyl has become like almost an obsession of mine this yeah. past two weeks, and I'm fascinated by how deep how deep the crevices go of yeah. vinyl. It's crazy. And I think that finding a good sound setup where you can just like chill and turn on a record is a great, a great thing. So. Super, super relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the vibe. Sometimes I look at my phone and look at Instagram reels. Sick. Doom scroll. Let's check. be real. All of our answers are that. And some of us, whenever we're being smart, do other things that are actually restful. I really like to conversate with my friend Sam, too. It's my, one of my favorite things to rest is just unpack my day with Sam. We share a room, so it's like we're kind of married a little bit. You're kind yeah. of married a little bit. Hey. Okay. Hey, well, guys. All right. There you have it. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love your little faces yeah. and your little glimpse. Yeah.